G'day folks and welcome to episode 16 of uh, Gourmet's Shed. Uh, radical measures uh, to improve um, running on some of our track actually. Um, what I'm looking at this week is, uh, as I said, fairly radical. So uh, if there's uh, any prototypical purists out there or rivet counters amongst you, I think you better leave now. <laughs> I, I would hate to think you would faint uh, when you see what I'm about to do. And uh, I'll, I'll just grab some things and I'll explain what I'm going to do. Okay. Now, uh, what we've got here is a little uh, 060 diesel locomotive. And uh, it's a Backman and it's second hand. It's been around for a while. And these models have very small wheels and they do their pickup in the chassis, uh, the typical uh, split chassis system. Now because the wheels are so small and uh, the whole operation is small I suppose with this particular locomotive, if it gets onto a piece of track that's not quite level uh, you might have one wheel lift just a fraction enough so that it causes problems with the electrical pickup and the, and the locomotive will stall. Um, now if you've gone through the locomotive, if you've cleaned all the pickup areas, if you've cleaned the wheels and uh, it runs okay but it runs uh, just uh, with a hesitation over a particular piece of track, well then possibly it's the track that's the problem. The other thing you've got to consider is that you've got enough electrical feeds into that section as well. I mean if you've got all of the above boxes ticked and the loco still stalls in that section, it, you really need to look closely at the track to see if there's any bit of track that's out of, just slightly out of alignment that can lift the wheels and cause problems with the electrical pickup. And uh, one way, you can, well, points are a, are a problem. It can also happen on straight track, but points are really the main issue. And uh, what you can have here is uh, an area where if I lay a flat file across this, uh, if this, if this was dead flat you wouldn't get any movement in the file. There is slight movement here which you can't see but I'll, I'll show you more of that when we move out into the workshop. So um, what I'm about to do is uh, some work on a test track that I've set up. I've got a, a bit of steel straight track. I've got uh, an old Pico point and uh, an old Pico Y point as well. And uh, the uh, old Pico point has that problem where the actual track is not dead flat. And uh, I'll show you how I go about fixing it. So uh, <laughs> if, if it's just the hardy amongst you left, well, we'll move out into the workshop and we'll get to work with the file. Okay, let's go. Right, we've set up a test track here uh, just to... Uh, see how this little loco performs and we'll just give it a bit of juice and see if it goes which it does now I've got it down to the crawl just to see how it performs over these points you can see there's a bit of a hesitation there it's actually stopped at speed it's fine I'll show you that It's got enough momentum to, to get over that section, um, but uh, there is still a slight hesitation. So what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to take this flat file, and that's critical that it has to be a flat file, and uh, we're going to run it across the rails here to uh, hopefully make them all even because I suspect that the uh, the track is slightly out of alignment height wise uh, which causes um, a lift on just a, a very very subtle lift on some of the wheels and which can affect the running now I've, I've done this before and this is the first time I've sort of uh, put it out publicly but I've I actually do run a file over some of the joints in my track and I'll show you some of that now as I hold the file uh, around where the uh, frog is, you can see that the track's not perfectly flat. It is if you just hold the file on two rails on this side, that's fine. There's a bit of movement there, 
uh, on the other side it's fine it's it's the uh, it's slightly higher in the middle here and when you move back further along the point when you get back to the switch rails here it's fine and uh, when I run over the the joint here where I've got some old steel rail meeting up with this, this old point actually it's pretty good you can't feel any anything sticking up to stop the the file sliding although uh, sometimes the, the joints can be so subtle and I'll show you what I mean this joint here you can see on this bit of rail I've run over this rail with uh, a bit of abrasive paper to clean it up it was in a bad way but you can see that it hasn't quite got that last bit of muck there because there is a slight difference in the height between those two bits of rail and I mean this this one is pretty good uh, but you can get uh, sometimes more of a significant difference in the height between the two so if I run over that with a flat file as well uh, that uh, greyish area should disappear All right, I'm just doing it on one rail at the moment holding the file flat and spreading it over a good area because you don't want you don't want to sort of create a dip so I'm going right along the rail holding the file along the length of it here just to see how we go and then I'll also hold it across the two rails so that I'm making sure I'm getting it flat and just work my way over the area. Now we're not taking much off it's minute the amount that's coming off here but it will improve that joint I'm getting a little bit of um, filings coming down around the area so you need to vacuum that up when you're finished now we'll zoom in on that area again and there we are that's an improvement on that I it, it doesn't look much different I suppose but it is an improvement there and that will give much better running over that section now the real test here is this uh, point so I'm just going to run mostly over the uh, frog area here with the file and uh, work my way along occasionally I'm trying to keep it as even as I can so all rails get the same sort of treatment now you'll notice that the uh, the middle section here is becoming bright this is to a certain extent this rail is not really even being touched much at the moment so we'll give it a bit more once we see all the rails are bright it means that the files making contact evenly all the way along and it should have the desired result we hope fingers crossed so I know this seems crazy just give it a bit more right I'll just get a brush and remove some of the filings and blow them don't want that sort of stuff getting up into the loco and as I say vacuuming is the best way to go to get rid of this stuff now we might zoom in on that area probably doesn't mean much to you there at the moment what we'll need to do is run the loco and see what happens so we'll do that now now the controller I'm using for this is an old um, feedback controller or pulses or whatever it is and uh, it makes the loco quite jerky at slow speed but I'll try and get it even slower and uh, we'll see how it goes So that's pretty good really, I mean at that speed 
most of the time the loco will have a bit more speed than that and this is an insole frog point and it's old and uh, that's just the, the subtle difference that this sort of thing can make This is uh, Smoky Joe, an old 040. It's about 25 years old now. Very hard to uh, get it to run slowly. As I turn it down, it stops. But um, it also is having no trouble. If I can just adjust that slightly to get it to go, to get it to crawl. There we go. And when you kick it in to reverse it, it picks up speed. But anyway, I'll show you another one. This is a relatively uh, recent uh, little 040, one of the old cheapo versions. But uh, because of the wheel arrangement, these sorts of locos, they're the ones that have trouble picking up over, especially insole frogs. And uh, yeah, this, this loco will normally go like a scalded cat, but um, it's hard to get it to go this slow, but it seems to be having no trouble over the point. Right, here's another one. This pannier crawling reasonably slow over the, the frog. And now we send it back the other way. No problem at all. This is one area on my uh, railway where I uh, use this method with the file. This joint on the bridge that uh, drops down and gives access to the room. Um, the the track leading up to this uh, meets this piece of timber here and then there's a, a matching piece of timber on the bridge and then the track runs away. Well the bridge is, the, the, sorry, the timber has formed uh, a sort of a hump if you like, a very subtle hump and you get the odd loco that comes over it and sort of comes up to it and then drops down the other side if that makes sense and uh, I just thought I'd it would be better if I could sort of flatten out the area, which I did. And uh, everything runs quite a lot better over there now. I've done it on both rails, of course, both uh, sets of track. And, uh, you know, I, I gained inspiration from that. So I moved on to uh, the next set of joints over this side and uh, did them as well. Not that anything was running badly over there, but, it, you know, it just runs a bit better now. The uh, double slips have been done as well. Just about everything's been gone over as I gain confidence with the method. And I suppose this was one of the um, the worst offenders, this three-way point here. Um, again, this actually drops down here. There's a, there's a bit of a drop down to a lower level. And uh, I think that was part of the problem. Uh, however, when I ran the, uh, the file over this point, you know, it had the same issues as I just showed you a while ago. And uh, I thought, well, I'll tidy it up. So, um, it's only been small amounts of material coming off each time. Uh, yet, uh, you know, I've improved things around here. Especially for the, uh, the little diesel shunter which will be working in this area. It used to, um, used to have an issue with this point here. And I tried... Uh, all sorts of repinning down and packing and all sorts to try and change the profile a bit on the point and uh, it wasn't that successful until I got to it with the file and uh, now the little diesel runs quite well over there so there you go well folks fairly radical measures I I'm sure you would agree and uh, I have actually used this uh, method on quite a bit of my track on Great Chesterford Junction so uh, don't be too worried about uh, attacking your track with a file, but uh, it would be a good idea to practice on some old reject track first to get the hang of it. And uh, don't have too coarse a file, you know, a nice fine file, uh, which is only taking off a minimum amount of material at a time is the way to go. And uh, work over uh, a large area when you're, when you're filing down so that it's all even. Uh, of course, uh, one thing that you must remember is that uh, 
all power to the track is turned off and uh, even pull the, the plug out of the uh, wall socket is probably a good idea. We don't want any uh, short circuits or um, uh, any electrical equipment blowing up so um, best to be on the safe side. So that's your lot for this week and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. So I'll see you next time. Cheers. Gorma.